Welcome to Champion Minded, the podcast for those who aim for excellence, not only in the sports arena, but in life. My name is Alistair McCaw, author, speaker, mindset and performance coach, and my goal is to help you unleash your unlimited potential and provide you with the tools to achieve greatness. Are you ready to become Champion Minded? Then let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome to the Champion Minded Podcast, or welcome back to it, I'm Alistair McCaw. 26th of January 2020, um, we lost an icon and a legend of our sport, Kobe Bryant, um, in very tragic situation uh, and circumstances. Uh, him and his daughter, Gigi, were involved in a helicopter crash um, uh, together with uh, eight others um, in Calabasas, an area I know very well, just near Malibu, where... I go out and spend some time with my good friend Martin out there, uh, but very, very sad, very, very tragic, and we've seen this week what an impact it has had on so many people and people sharing their stories and encounters with uh, with Kobe. Um, I mean, such an impact that it did happen on the 26th of January, which was obviously Grammy's, Grammy's night, and... I was just listening to the radio yesterday where they said that it, that viewership uh, was down more than 35% because of the Kobe uh, tragedy and obviously you know ESPN were, were showing uh, tributes to him. So just a, an amazing impact that this athlete has had and what a legacy he left. I mean, the age of 41, um, you could see he gave everything that he had to what he was doing. You know, when he was in his career and playing basketball, he, he gave absolutely everything um, and then obviously after his career everything to his family which you know he was living for his wife and his three daughters um, and of course you know that started that academy as well for Gigi who was an aspiring basketball player and who knows how good she could have gone on to I mean if she had a mentor like Kobe um, she probably could have been great as well but we'll we'll never know that it's a very very sad situation but I just wanted to put this podcast out there as a tribute to him. He's, I never got to meet him, but um, I got to know about him through a good friend who was actually Kobe's trainer at the LA Lakers, Tim DeFrancesco. And um, I asked him a few times what he was like, and you know, Tim's response would be just the total professional. Uh, the energy would lift when he'd walk into the room, and you know, everything would change. He was LA Lakers. He was the um, the captain, the CEO, the the energy, the you know people came to see Kobe, and uh, you know Tim just said just his level of professionalism, his ability to energize others and inspire others was just second to none. Obviously, when he left the the franchise, it left a, a huge vacuum. But um, Kobe left his mark. Twenty, you know. Uh, you will remember where you were when you heard, you know, when of the tragic accident of Kobe. I, I was, I was in a departmental store here in, in Delray Beach, um, when I got a message about Kobe's death and and couldn't believe it. Uh, went on to Twitter, which I usually do to to verify news, and it was true. Um, just unbelievable. But you guys that have read my book out there, Champion Minded, you know, I've spoken a lot about Kobe, and also in. Um, becoming a great team player as well of just what a team player he was and what an impact he left and such an example to every athlete and every team player out there is is to be like Kobe to have the energy and the commitment like Kobe one of the stories I always remember about Kobe was when they were in Las Vegas where they'd usually have the USA team practices and um his trainer got a phone call at, I think it was 3.30 in the morning, and it was Kobe. And, you know, he answered the phone and said, hey, is everything okay? You know, he was obviously worried that, you know, he was getting this call at 3.30 in the morning. He thought maybe something had happened to Kobe or Kobe wasn't feeling well. And Kobe said, hey, coach, can you meet me in the gym at 4? That's 4 a.m. And when the trainer got there, when the coach got there, Kobe had already been there working out. And that's 4 a.m. in the morning. And Kobe went on until 7 a.m. And he had to complete his, his, his 1,000 um, throws uh, before he left the gym. And, you know, take in mind, they still had a full team practice that morning with the USA team. You know, we're talking 
Dwayne Wade and LeBron James and Kevin Garnett and all these legends of the sport, Jason Kidd, and he had a short breakfast and went back to practice and, and um, you know, had a three-hour practice with the team and then stayed on afterwards to shoot more hoops, to work on his game. That is why he will always be one of the greatest and why he was one of the greatest is he'll be known for his work ethic. He wasn't the most talented kid, but his work ethic was second to none. Again, another great lesson for all you young aspiring athletes out there is, you know, that work ethic will get you very, very far if you're committed and dedicated to it. Just a few weeks ago, I had the pleasure to, you know, sit down and spend some time with Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski of Duke basketball and you know coach K was the was the coach of the USA basketball team to two Olympics where they won two golds Beijing and and London and of course you know in every conversation with coach K um, you know Kobe comes up you know with with regards to all these things of just what a a great man he was and how important he was for the team and of course back then before Beijing there were they were wondering how they were going to get this group of players together with, you know, <laughs> which are known to have massive egos and, you know, in the NBA. And how are they going to bring these players together to play as a team? And, you know, Coach K, who's one of the best in the business and best of bringing teams together, had never coached an NBA team. He, he you know, he works with Duke University. And uh, they brought him in. And, of course, there was some criticism at the start. But the first two players he brought into the, into the room that day, into the office that day, were... Kobe and LeBron of asking them how are we going to bring these guys together and he knew that if they could you know bring Kobe and LeBron together and work as one then the rest of the guys would as well and and they did um, they were all willing to play any role they were you know there was no egos in the team they had one mission and that was to win gold and they backed that up in London again you might remember back to 2004, I think it was, um, where they lost the gold medal. I think they lost in the, in the semis and um, because the team weren't playing as one. So, you know, Kobe was a huge factor in bringing the Team USA basketball together. Another story was back in the 90s, I think it was around about 96, 97, L.A. Lakers were playing against Utah Jazz and Jazz, and Bryant was a skinny teenage rookie at that time, and not even yet an NBA champion. Now, why that game is so memorable is that most people remember it because of how spectacularly bad he was on the night. He was four for fourteen from the floor and zero from six from the three-point range. Now, the only reason he saw extended minutes in that game is because Brian Scott missed the game with a sprained wrist, and uh, Robert Horry was ejected, and Shaq O'Neal was fouled with under two minutes left in the game. But after averaging around 15 minutes of, of game time during the regular season, suddenly Kobe was in the game. And, you know, like I said, he had a shocking game. And after the game, a bunch of reporters gathered around his locker and asked him, you know, you know, you know how could you play so bad? And, and is it not embarrassing to play this way? And he just said, you know, uh, if it makes me better, if I learn from it, then, you know, that's the way forward. And, you know, that's how Kobe was, is that he didn't let those things bother him. He knew that he would learn from that and he would get better from that. And that just shows you the character of the, the person he was. You know, they, they talk about Mamba mentality. That was, you know, his mental strength. You know, a lot of people might talk about his ego, but, you know, you have to have a certain degree of ego. You have to, you know, that's your confidence. It's, it's what you think of yourself. And, he didn't let any doubters get in the way. He he stuck to his guns. That's that's who Kobe was. He he you know he just wasn't the talk. He he put it out there. He proved that. And our arrogance for me is someone that talks about how great they are, but they don't back it up. Kobe had the confidence. He had the inner self belief of of what he could do. But um, you know we were we were so fortunate fortunate to experience greatness, to experience someone with a work ethic like this, to experience a good human being, someone that was so committed and devoted to his family and to other great causes as well, charities, um, his academy. He was all about giving back. And for me, that's, that's champion-minded. Um, Kobe's death will, reminds us of, of how short life is. Um, but he, he definitely reminds us the way that we need to live it. You know, 
we, we don't have that time. We don't know how much time we have. You know, um, tell those you love that you love them. You know, book that trip if you want to go travel. Enroll for that course. You know, don't put things off, guys. Life, life is short and definitely, you know, we've been reminded by, by Kobe of how quick it can be. So I think that's all I want to put into this one, guys. It's a tribute to Kobe. Um, you know, the, the tributes continue to pour in and, and you see on social media of just what an impact he was. So um, anyway, that's it. Stay champion-minded, guys.